Welcome back to the channel. Today we're out in our large greenhouse again. We just gave an update on this, but I wanted to come out and I wanted to show some temperatures of all these systems we've got running. And I wanted to talk about the insulation value of snow. Just one inch of snow has the same insulation value as a two by four board. And 12 inches of snow have the same value as a home wall with insulation in between on two by four studs. So having all of this snow all around the greenhouse at the base is really giving us quite an insulation factor to the earth outside our greenhouse and to the earth inside our greenhouse. We are not frozen in here at all and we had negative temperatures last night and we're sitting about 10 degrees outside right now. 10 degrees Fahrenheit with a little bit of wind blowing. When the sun came up today we had zero degrees Fahrenheit for a temperature as the sun was rising. So I want to take a look at the temps inside this box. They're usually higher than the ambient temperature of our greenhouse any given day of the week, even with little solar activity. And we're at about 50% solar activity right now. We had a cloudy day up until basically this point, the sun is starting to break through. So I wanted to take a temp. We've got so much humidity in here that it's raining on our box and continually leaking into it. So I've got to figure out some way to control all of this moisture. So here we are trying to check on this after about half an hour of sunlight. So let's jump up here and kind of check the temp. We've got so much humidity that it's just raining all over this thing in here. We're sitting 57 degrees maybe. And inside the greenhouse, we're sitting about 48 on our thermometer down there. And that's with 10 degree temperatures outside right now. So this entire heating experiment completely runs off the sun. This little hose that sucks the hot air out of this box all the way down to the other side is run on a solar powered 10 watt fan. So this is completely solar driven. But even on a cold cloudy day, we still get a little bit of solar energy trapped in this box, heating up them rocks and continually releasing it throughout the night. I'd really like to refine this and put a different box in a different location in the greenhouse, but this is what I have right now. And a lot of you guys are saying to paint the rocks black, and I agree with you, because black surfaces versus light surfaces and shiny surfaces definitely have a different solar impact and a solar thermal capacity. So if I was to paint these rocks black, I would use some type of non-toxic paint because I don't want to poison myself by spray painting these rocks and then possibly taking them out and using them elsewhere another day. So on the subject of light and dark, I want to take a look real quick at some temperatures. So the temperature in the greenhouse is about 49, 48, 49. That's the air we're blowing into the fan through the tube, through our compost. So the door's about 33. We're sitting at about 56, 56, 57 degrees on this pond liner that's just wrapped around our shiny pipe. Down here, we're sitting about 46, 48 degrees on our pipe. That is a major difference from the 56, 57 we saw up at the top of our greenhouse. So it's basically staying the same temperature as the ambient temperature of the greenhouse. That's just a plain and simple light versus dark measurement right there. We're 10 degrees without very much solar activity coming through the clouds, just enough to run the solar fan that's pumping the air through but not enough to really heat anything up. So the 56, 57 degrees we're trapping at the top in this is transferring and creating more heat through the actual pile to blow out and create more heat in the airspace of the greenhouse also. So let's take a look at what kind of temps we're pumping out of the airspace in here. About 90 degrees, our compost pile is about 135. It is on the downslope because it is not very big. We got this cooking pretty hot, but it's starting to fizzle out. It's on its downward slope towards cooling off. So the amount of heat we're actually gonna get to pull off of this is not substantial compared to our small greenhouse because this pile is so small. We may be putting 90 degrees through the entire greenhouse, but this is only a short term pile that is only going to run for maybe another week or two before I have to actually build more compost and get it hot again. And that can be a struggle in the winter time. So along with the temperatures, I want to show what kind of airflow this is really putting out. This is really cranking the air. Our little fan up here blowing the air through the entire pile being heated up 
and getting cranked back out into the greenhouse airspace to heat everything up and continually recycle. That is some decent airflow. So I figured while I had this lit, I would show how this draw is working. You can see that smoke getting funneled right down that tube. So this tube runs through the bottom of the box and all the way down with that 10 watt solar fan and it's getting some decent draw from 50 feet away. I wanted to show this little water heating system one more time before I actually take this hose out. This cheap little pond hose, it was one inch pond hose or one and a quarter inch pond hose, it did not hold up. We had it crack and blow out. We've got that little leak right there. I've got to pull all that up and now I've got to pull all that hose up. So I should have went with something different in the first place, but this is what we had to run with. So that's kind of what I tried out. I'm going to get some PEX tubing or something similar that I can lay down in the ground, bury it deep enough, and then run it through my compost also. So I am going to be reworking this entire system. This will look different, everything will look different, and I'm going to add some geothermal to the center of my greenhouse floor, and I'm also going to try and power that with the already moving water that we have. So I'm trying to double up on my energy conservation. So what I wanted to do is just come out here and show what was coming through there about 60 degrees or so sitting about 60 degrees that's pretty decent for being so darn cold outside and we've been losing water you can see where our line was there and it, we've lost about five six inches of water maybe so we don't want to keep running that and run our system dry so all of this is going to be kind of going to the wayside and I'm going to change this up. I want a bigger overflow tank for more thermal mass. I want a better hose and the pump works just great. So I'm going to continue using my pump and solar powered system. And the next time we come out, I will have all of this excavated. I wanna bring everybody along for how I'm going to achieve the cheapest geothermal heating of air that I possibly can. So I just wanted to come out and show the temperatures of what we're actually achieving out in this greenhouse under the worst circumstances. It could be colder, but we had negative temperatures. Like I said, it was zero this morning when I got up. I wanna thank everybody for watching this video. And if anybody has any questions, comments, or suggestions, please drop them in the comment section below. We love to hear feedback from all of our subscribers. It really helps us out in the brainstorming phase. So I'm excited to bring the next step of this build together and show everybody how I'm doing it. So if we decide cumulatively that that something should be changed, I can change it mid process. I'm not bringing a finished product. I can kind of bounce all this info off of everybody and see what everybody's thoughts are.